Lately the flowers that surround me have been calling me more and more and whenever I see a beautiful flower that is blossoming their beautiful calyxes and their beautiful colors I get the desire to know who is speaking to me in their own unique way and I want to know who is growing against the blue sky with perseverance each of these plants with their unique colors their unique fragrances and shapes evoke a different feeling in me some brought back memories that I had already forgotten memories of making bouquets and weaving flower crowns as a little girl in a field full of daisies and buttercups and cowslips some became part of a new memory you know flowers are speaking directly to your soul whether you are aware of it or not and all flowers like to use their own language their own unique symbolism to communicate with us humans and to show what they can offer to us for example the daisy looks so innocent and it reminds us to be playful again the rose on the other hand looks bold and brave then there is the shy nettle and the passionate poppy to just name a few and they all have their own unique messages to share and the more i learn about plants the more i fall in love with them and it is just so satisfying walking through the woods and the meadows and just know who is talking to you and who you are meeting and I just have been loving learning more about the plants and their properties and how I can incorporate them into my witchcraft practice and they all became silent teachers to me reminding me that everything needs patience and perseverance and blossoms when the time is right so if you are at a crossroad in your life or you just don't know what to do go outside and spend time in nature and just see what flowers are calling out to you and i promise you that they have a message that they want to share with you i have been studying quite a lot about herbs and trees and flowers and plants in general about their properties and mythologies and all of them have a story to tell of their own and i decided to collect these stories these memories and this knowledge in a diary a diary that i wanted to make of recycled paper weaving the unique wisdom of each plan that would cross my path in the future into my practice so come with me on this journey where we will embark on creating our own recycled paper diary pouring our love for nature into each page and filling it with the wisdom of the plants we encounter. You will need a mold and a decal and for that you can simply use two old picture frames that you no longer need. You will need fly screen and a stapler. One of the picture frames is already finished, you don't have to do anything to this one, but for the other one you will have to cut out a piece of your fly screen so it is perfectly fitting into the picture frame and after that you simply and carefully staple the fly screen on your picture frame. Here I'm checking that the fly screen is tight because otherwise it will be difficult to make the paper because the water will collect in the middle of the fly screen and make it really difficult to make paper. And that's basically all you need to make paper.
Now comes the part which I think was the most exhausting. We are going to tear up all of the cardboard and paper pieces that we collected over time and after making my paper I realized that it would have been better to not use cardboard because the paper gets really thick and it makes it difficult to write on it with some ink so that is something I learned while making paper with some cardboard but I really love how the green cardboard gave such a beautiful and cute green tint to my paper and I'm definitely going to use it for some other use but I will make some new paper after this batch that you see right here and you want to soak in all of your pieces of paper in water and I'm going to stir everything and already give some intention into it because that's what witches do, right? And you want to leave that for at least 15 hours. I had to leave it way longer because I used such thick cardboard. But yeah, I would say maybe leave it a day, then you are on the safe side. All right, and now let's make the cloth sheets that you will also need later on. And I thought that using the picture frame that I used for the mold and the deckel was big enough, but I later realized while drying them that it's best to make them a little bit bigger on top and on the sides so you can put the hangers there because otherwise you risk to damage the paper while using your hangers. So yeah, that is something I learned as well. I would have made it a little bit longer on the top and on the left and the right side, but we are all learning why we are crafting, right? I don't really recommend doing all of that work on your floor but I don't have a table so I have to work on my floor but if you have the chance please make sure to honor your bag and work at a desk. <laughs> nice. I made about 30 or 40 of these cloth sheets and yeah it was really satisfying after that work was done. You also want to make sure that you iron your cloth sheets because preparation is key here and you are working with wet paper and cardboard so it will show in the paper and while doing that make sure that you collect hairs from you or your dog while doing that that can always happen but they could be included in your paper so yeah just a little tip right here while you are ironing you can check for any hairs or dirt or something like that that you don't want to have in your paper. Now let's make the pulp. For that I'm going to use a mixer that I'm not going to use in my kitchen anymore. And I used two to three handfuls of the soaked paper and yeah, simply use the water from this mixture to save the water and not use any fresh one. There is no use for that. And I had no idea what I was doing, so I basically just winged it and yeah, tried out what mixture and kind of ratio between the soaked cardboard and water would bring the best results and you want to make sure that the pulp is really smooth that there is no big pieces inside anymore after that use water from your soaked mixture and pour it into another plastic tray not all of it but yeah you can use quite a lot and here I made my first mistake I was using two to three hands from the pulp and this would have been perfect but then I decided to go for all of it because I had no idea. So because I used quite a thick cardboard, I got quite a thick mixture, as you will see in a second, so I don't recommend it. And at the end, after making paper for about an hour, I found that the perfect mixture was water and every three to four papers, one or two hands full of pipe. So that is basically enough and yeah 
By doing that you will get a really thick paper that is beautiful as well but not made for a journal or for the purpose of a journal. And here you see my second mistake because I thought using PVC glue to secure our fly screen even more would be a good idea. And it was not because PVC glue and water will get liquid again so don't do this as well. But actually this process was so satisfying, I had so much fun and I'm not gonna lie, it took some time, it took some practice until I had the perfect workflow for myself. But as you can see, shaking it like this will make really smooth paper. Actually it was like baking, like you know when you use sugar on some um, cake or muffin and you use a strainer for that I feel like this gave the same result and effect right here but yeah really really satisfying work and make sure to drain all the water so yeah and after that carefully remove the decal and here you go you have your first piece of paper now use one of your cloth sheets and carefully put the paper on top and press it a little bit. I also thought that it would be a good idea to put something under, but actually it was not. If you want to use a cloth under your mold and your cloth sheet, make sure that it is ironed because you will see the structure in your paper. And also I think using a sponge would be much easier to remove the liquid and the water from your paper. So here you can see that the structure from my not ironed sheet went into my paper, which is okay. But make sure that you use a sponge and you press out all the liquid to remove any of these bubbles. All right, now let's hang them. And here you can see what I meant earlier. If you have a cloth sheet that is not big enough on the top and at the sides, it will be difficult to hang the paper. And I simply hang them on my laundry rack and I also thought it would be a good idea to leave them outside because it was really warm but the sun made them roll up at the sides so again this is something I learned I think it is best to just leave them inside and let them dry with like room temperature and I love how this looks like a cow I don't know can you see it as well so I would recommend to let them dry inside for about a day and I just love this aesthetic. I love the green color of my paper sheets. So yeah, really happy. This step is optional, but I used a book binding press that I made the other day because I left them out in the sun, they crinkled up, so I pressed them down and I was hoping that they would get more flat again, which happened. And this was actually so satisfying to check out my self-made paper that I infused with so much magic and love and passion. And I think this was the most satisfying process to actually gently remove them from the sheet cloth and be a little bit careful depending on the thickness of your paper. They can rip easily is what I found. So I would usually turn them around and then remove the cloth sheet because this worked best for me. But as always find your own process and yeah, see what works for you. I will bind the Greenwich Diary later once I am sure how I want to design the pages and just like my flower teachers I will be patient and make this project an ongoing craft. So if you want to see that then don't forget to do the YouTube magic and subscribe to my channel. I decided to use the daisy as my very first flower for my Greenwich Diary and for that I spent quite some time with it. I collected a bunch of these because I am going to make some cream with them and I think it is really important to get to know a flower when you are working with it and to study it and its properties and to just really get to know their true magic. If you want to start your own Greenwich Diary, here are some journaling prompts to get you started. Where and when did you find the flower? Why did it call out to you? 
What life situation are you in right now? What memory does this flower evoke in you? What feeling does this flower evoke in you? What do you already know about this flower? Do you know any mythologies or legends about the flower? Do you know any other stories that include that specific flower? How can you incorporate this flower into your practice? And what message do you think the flower wanted to give you? I really hope this video inspires you to make your own Green Witch Diary in whatever way works for you. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.